for uh, question 45, it says that you have a triangular garden. Okay, and the sides are 62 by 54. And the angle opposite the 62 foot side is 58 degrees. Okay, and so what you want to do is uh, you want to find what um, what are the questions that I asked you in there? Do I ask you to find what the other side is? Okay. All right, so you do need to basically solve for the other, the missing information for this triangle. Well, what pattern is fulfilled here? You have SSA. And the side that's opposite our given angle is longer than the um, other side. So how many different triangles could we possibly have here? One, right? So there's only one triangle. This is the SSA pattern with one solution. Right? Does everybody understand like why that's the case? Hint, it might be useful. Everybody's good on that? Okay. So when you look at that and uh, you understand you're dealing with one triangle, what we can do is we can use the SSA pattern. Tells us we should use law of sines. Okay? So we're going to use law of sines to solve this. So we have our set ratio, right here is the known one. And so what we can do is we can find the missing angle, I'll call it X here. Okay, so when I set this up, I'm gonna put my, or actually I'm gonna call it A right here. So I'm gonna find angle A. So if I write the sine of A, oops, let me label it this way. And so if I wanna find this angle A here, I'm going to write my sine of A over 54. The opposite side is equal to the known ratio, sine of 58 over the opposite side, 62. And I'm going to solve this using my calculator. But remember, I can't just solve for A here. The, the TI-89 won't um, take an inverse trig ratio and find a variable embedded within this trig ratio. So I need to use substitution. I'll let X equal the whole sine ratio, sine of A. And I'm going to solve for x in this case. So when I use my calculator here, the F2 algebra tab, I get x divided by 54, set that equal to the sine of 58 divided by 62. I'm going to put a decimal there so my answer is given in decimal form. And when I hit enter, close it off, identify x as the uh, variable I'm solving for. I expect my ratio to be some number between negative 1 and 1. Okay, and it is. And now if I want to solve for my unknown angle, I'm going to take the inverse ratio of that value. So the inverse sine of x. Use the width key and then just highlight it. This is going to give me my actual inverse sine. So this tells me what the angle is that I'm looking for. In this particular case, it winds up being uh, 47.61. And so here's my angle. The next thing is to find my uh, remaining angle. So the remaining angle here uh, can be found by taking the sum of the angles, 180, subtracting 58 from that, and then this angle that we just found, the 47.6. And we're able to identify what the missing angle B would equal, uh, 74.39 approximately. And then once you have that, the last piece of information is this side, which we'll call B, since it's opposite the angle B that I label. And so in order to find that, we're going to set up a new ratio. This time it's our side is unknown, so I'll put that on top. B over the sine of the angle opposite it, 74.39. Set that equal to the known ratio. So since I'm starting with the side lengths on top, the 62 goes on the top of this ratio over the sine of 58. Once again, we're going to use the solve feature. Okay, and here we are finding the variable. So I can call it x, but it'll give us the direct solution. So if I click the solve feature, F2 algebra tab, write my equation, x divided by the sine of the angle that I just found, 74.4. Set that equal to 62 divided by the sine of 58. Close it off and solve for 
the x, the variable I want it to. Okay, I do have decimals already in here, so my answer will be displayed in decimal form. I get uh, x is 70.41. Okay, now let's, let's look and see if this is consistent with what we would expect. In any triangle, the shortest side should be opposite the smallest angle. Is that true here? Yeah. Okay, so that part checks. What about the largest angle opposite the longest side? Is that true? Yeah. So, again, it's not a guarantee to tell you, yes, you're right or wrong, but it does at least demonstrate that you have a reasonable answer. Okay? You might be able to find it if you're wrong. Here, you just know that you have a chance of being correct on it. So the, the next step after this is to find out um, how much fertilizer is needed to cover uh, this entire garden. So in order to find that, you have to know the area of this. So the area of this, the only pattern that we had up to this point, because we, we hadn't talked about the Heron's formula yet, the only pattern we had was the SAS pattern. And so we're going to use that area equation, which is 1 half the product of any two sides times the sine of the angle between those two sides. And so it doesn't matter which ones we choose. We can use angle A and then sides B and C. We can use any other piece of information that we want. Since I wrote it this way, that's how I'm going to use it. So 1 half, side B is 70.4, side C is 62, all times the sine of angle A, which is 47.6. And so that's the calculation I'm going to use. So if I type that in 0.5 times, I'm going to highlight 70.4. Now again, notice I do have to get rid of this x equals. Right, and then that times 62. And then all of that times the sine of the angle 42, so or the angle of 47.6. So I'm going to go up and find that measure, enter it close off my sign ratio and now when I hit enter this should give me the total area which winds up being 1612.22 and now the question asks you again I don't know if I specifically asked for the area but it, it tells you that each bag can uh, cover 200 square feet so if this was our square footage and when you look to uh, use unit conversion you have one bag is equivalent to 200 square feet. Here our units can cancel. And so if we take this number and divide by 200, we'll get the number of bags that you can use. And now your answer is 8.06. Can you purchase 0.06 of a bag if you go to a store? No. So how many bags do you need to purchase? So this one, you have to actually round it all the way up because it's a partial. It's kind of like cans of paint is the other way that story problems will often do this. And so you have to convert this into nine because you can't uh, buy just a portion of it.